Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Today we're going to continue with our Summer Virtue series. Now we've talked about what a virtue is, we've talked about the virtue of faith, and today we're going to talk about the virtue of courage. So I just want to reiterate what a virtue is. A virtue is moral excellence of a character trait, such as faith, courage, humility, and etc. So today we're really going to be focusing on the book of Samuel and the Bible, which is in the Old Testament, kind of focusing on the story of David and Goliath. So I hope you're as excited as I am to get started with this story. So let's first just bow our heads in prayer and enter into a space where we're ready to open our hearts to the will of God and to his word. So please just bow your heads with me and pray in your own way. Come Holy Spirit, come. Thank you for being with us today. Please open our hearts and our minds to your word, Lord, to what you've called us to do. And remember in our hearts that we are loved, called, and sent out by you. Amen. All right, so first and foremost, let's define what courage is. And I think there are two really great ways to define courage. So first and foremost is a quote by the author Mark Twain. And what he says is this, that courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than your fear. Now, as Christians, it's very true and we take that in completely. But another way to look at this um, from a Christianity standpoint is simply this, is that we interpret the virtue of courage as being motivated from our hearts to do something brave. And that can be little things. And maybe, you know, it's public speaking. That's a big one for people. A lot of people are kind of scared from that. So having the courage to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep doing it and keep getting better. That's a huge thing when it comes to the virtue of courage. Because as we've talked about the last couple of weeks, you know, developing moral virtue is not going to be big events in our lives. It's going to be small day by day tasks that we do that potentially will lead up to a larger event where we're going to use the full force of that moral virtue that we've developed. But until that time comes, it is little by little, day by day. Now, we can actually see that in the story of David and Goliath, because as we know, before David faced Goliath, he had faced a lion, a tiger, and a bear when they uh, attacked his flock of sheep, and he defended them and fought those animals off to protect his flock. And so the thing is, when he went up against Goliath, he'd already had this experience of being able to stand and not to be afraid, well, whether he was afraid or not, isn't the focus here is that he had the courage and the trust in God that he would succeed because of the circumstances he had seen previously to this. He fought through those and he would fought fight through this again as well and be successful because Christ was with him, God was with him, and that he knew he could do this because by the grace of God, it was going to be achievable because that's what he knew. He had the courage to believe that I can go and face this giant because I know my God is greater than this giant and he will intercede for me on my behalf. And that's what God did. So I want to encourage you to go read um, 1 Samuel verses 17 through 58. There's a lot of great information here about the story of David, and it really goes into the full story. But what I'm going to focus on with you guys today is just the key components of this Bible story. The first key component of the story of David and Goliath is that David had the courage to go to battle with a giant. I mean, that's a really big deal. <laughs> he had the courage to that. And how many of us, if we honestly ask ourselves, would have that courage? And so again, having had the practice with the lion, the tiger, and the bear, he had developed that courage little by little to face this pinnacle moment in his life. He also had steadfast confidence in Christ and in himself. That's huge. But beyond that, he believed that God would protect him and that God would intercede for him, which he did. And this was an act of faith influenced that he had done the entire army. When the army saw what this young shepherd boy had done, they were influenced by faith in this man that they could stand as well. And the thing is, it takes one person with courage to change the world. Just one person with courage. And David did this. His influence of having courage influenced an entire army to be willing to stand. Because before David had come out with his faith and his courage, they were shaking in their boots. When they saw David's courage, they said, I can do that too. And that's really powerful. The fact that one person who has courage can influence an entire group of people. And finally, he was victorious because God was on his side. These are the components that are so important to the story of David and Goliath and David overcoming this giant in his life. And so now what I want to invite you guys to do is get a sticky note, or even if you just put a piece of paper with tape to the wall, I want you to write down why courage is important to you. 
we've talked about the story of David and what happened in his story, but I want you to take five minutes and just really think about why it's incurred, why is it important to you? So again, why is courage important to me and in my life? And why should I care about courage? So just take a couple minutes, write those down, and then come back. So you can hit pause here, and when you're ready, just hit play. All right, I hope that was really helpful just to spend some time kind of really thinking about courage in your own way and having that in your own heart. So now we're gonna move on to our activity today. Now this activity is a little bit different, and what you're gonna need is a pretty large size cardboard, so about like eight feet in height and maybe like three feet um, in width I think would be sufficient. And I would just encourage you to print off a picture or look up a picture of Goliath on your phone and just kind of do a sketching of Goliath. And then what you're going to do is you can, you know, put it up in a room or I would recommend outside because you will be throwing objects at it. So that might be nice. We don't want to break any windows. So just put it outside in your yard and you can go out there and you can have these have three stones each, just like David did. And you can take them and you can throw them at Goliath and try to knock it over, just as David did. Having the confidence and the bravery of David and even rereading the story of David from 1 Samuel before you go into the act of actually doing this. So again, the supplies you will need is a very large piece of cardboard, scissors, duct tape, just to tape it somewhere, and then also a marker and a pencil and a picture of Goliath to copy. And so just some final thoughts to leave you with for today's relevance of this is that as David went out to meet Goliath, you and I and all of us in this lifetime will encounter giants in our lives. But having the courage that David did to know that Christ and God would be there with him and make him victorious is something that we need to hold on to. And so the key here is to have the belief that David did in God that we can overcome anything because with God, all things are possible. I'll see you next week. Have a great day.